long ago it gets worse. <laughs> as long as I get it worse, all the rest of the day. And then, and then there were emails, and I finally said, it's six o'clock, I think they said, Here, can I have a quarter now? Okay, thank you, Jesus. Come, you blessed by my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, that we might more worthily celebrate these sacred and joyful mysteries, we prepare our hearts. We call to mind those times that we've sinned, and we ask for God's pardon and peace. Hmm. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Um, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Excuse me. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man, crippled from birth, was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leapt up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. Hmm. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek seek the Lord. Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the Lord. Lord. Um, Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day on the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. It happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Clopas, said in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. We were hoping he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Some women of our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning and did not find the body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him we did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. It happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, 
said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened. They recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened scripture for us? So they set out at once. They returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and appeared to si- he has appeared to Simon. Then the two of them accounted what had happened on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, this is one of those gospels, uh, no kidding, where it's hard, uh, very hard. It, it's like every sentence is packed with a very tangible, touchable meaning for us. Uh, someday, in fact, maybe on quarantine catechesis, I could take an hour, truly, more than an hour, and uh, this is just so packed with beautiful. Uh, But the two things I'm going to try to focus on and not wander off to all the others, right? Uh, This is picking rocks. If any of you grew up on a farm, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, But anyway, so the two things I want to hit us with are are probably unimportant in the grand scheme, but I think for our current situation might be helpful. First of all, I hope this isn't a horrible thing for you to hear. Uh, (laughs) When they don't know it's Jesus, they say to him something kind of wild. Are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened? He wouldn't have been. Just the year alone that Jesus was crucified, uh, Scripture flat out tells us, and and Roman records tell us, Pilate crucified over 3,000 Jews that year alone in Jerusalem. It was, I think, objectively a curious thing to say. Are you the only one who doesn't know? No, 90% of Jerusalem probably had no idea that it was another crucifixion. The Romans were brutal. But I think when we're in pain, I've noticed this of me, when I'm in a lot of pain, it's hard for me to remember that other people don't know. And I really want us to think about that because it's really convicted me numerous times when I've been hurt or angry at something someone said only because in retrospect, well, didn't they know what was going on in my life? No, they had no clue. Our pain is so loud, we think others can hear it. And I guess that's a twofold challenge for us, if I see it right. The first is, when people respond to you in a bizarre way, they're probably in a lot of pain. And rather than us getting indignant, or in my case, honestly, I I generally get curious. Like, I want to know. Humans don't need to make sense. Sometimes we just hurt. And sometimes when people respond to us in a way that seems bizarre, maybe it's a good time to pray that God healed our broken heart instead of focusing on how indignant we are. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. The second thing, and again, minor point, but I think it's kind of groovy for our day and age. Walking in the dark uh, was an awful and dangerous thing. You got to remember, there weren't street lights. And in our heads, I know we picture torches. That's just something they do in movies uh, so we can see what's going on. You don't do torches in places where you build with really dry old wood. That's just a bad idea. And particularly in this time, there's all kinds of writings about this. No one left home after sunset. Nobody. If you had guests, truly, and you were enjoying dinner and all of a sudden you realized it was dark, you stayed the night. Uh, Truly. Uh, So what does it mean that these guys who were so afraid all the time, and I would have been too, (laughs) that once they encountered Jesus, remember they said, it's dark. But then when they recognized Jesus was talking to them, what was their response? To walk back to Jerusalem. Seven miles. That's what it was. I walked it from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Seven miles they walked in the pitch black at a time when there was no police. No, It was a violent, awful time. Jesus was so real to them in that moment, they were not afraid of anything. And that blows me away. They didn't have time for the fear. They were so focused on what had just happened. So I know this is a long one, and God help you people. This is the short one. 
right? This is the short homily on this topic. But our two things I hope we walk away with is that we need to foster, recognize, and cherish all of our contacts with Christ to such a degree that we become a little bit unaware of what we're supposed to be afraid of, right? And the second thing, that will actually increase our awareness of what we should be conscious of, the pain of other people. So we pray that our celebration here give us strength to do that, to be aware that other people hurt too, and perhaps we can be merciful instead of indignant, and to be aware of the incredible and innumerable ways Christ comes to us so that our eyes are fixed on that rather than what we are afraid of. Amen? Let's rise and offer our prayers to the Lord. For leaders of the church, may God's wisdom flow in and through them in their witness to God's saving love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For areas of the world afflicted by violence, may God's hand raise up leaders who offer peaceful solutions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing conflict, May the Holy Spirit lead them in embracing understanding and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we receive eyes of faith to recognize the face of Christ in others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ, <clears throat> for lives lost to the coronavirus, mm. for all Holy Family parishioners who died on this date, including... Patricia Ann Stevens, and Louise Devendorf. May they rise with him to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Clifford Gauthier, for whom this Mass mm. is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we offer you our prayers, trusting that because you love us, you always give us what we need. We make this prayer of faith in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful, Lord. Help me to focus and to pray well and to give you glory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share and our humanity. Whoops. Okay. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me of my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. <clears throat> Please rise and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Set the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But uh, in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, <coughs> we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, Carl, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Thank you. Okay, Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Thank you, Lord. The disciples recognize the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. Alleluia. Please join me as we pray the spiritual communion prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What is past our lips as food, O Lord, may we receive in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time will be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, a reminder that today at noon, we're going to do a uh, quarantine catechesis, and uh, we're going to cover uh, uh, confession and Eucharist, theoretically. I mean, sometimes I go on and on. So, uh, okay, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, all holy men and women. Mm, thank you. Lilies, I think even with those fingers pulled out, that's funny. I'm all itchy from the lilies, I think. But we pulled the fingers out. Yeah, who knows? Uh, good morning, people of God. I'm sorry, um, but today's has, I can't stay. Um, <clears throat> uh, why can't I stay? Oh, last night, uh, my little knucklehead hurt his leg. He's fine, but... Uh, He's all doped up, and somebody's got to get him out. I have to carry him outside. Uh, I, I, last I knew, he, he's just out. So uh, I, I maybe what one or two questions, uh, but then <clears throat> I'll need to get going. 
Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so then how's this? Today, don't forget at noon, we're going to gather uh, on my Facebook page for a quarantine catechesis. And uh, we'll be covering uh, the sacraments. Yesterday we hit baptism pretty hard. And uh, today it'll be reconciliation and maybe Eucharist. I kind of doubt it now that I think about it because you people are huge sinners. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you guys. We're receiving so much uh, emotional, spiritual, and even financial encouragement during this time. And we are so terribly grateful uh, I, I just this morning said to my dad, I says, you know, this is a time of rest for a lot of people, uh, and uh, I think we're using it well uh, to grow. So um, there it is. Uh, I'm going to get going now. And, uh, oh, you got one for me? No, but we'll put those questions in tomorrow. Okay. We do have questions, but I'll tackle those tomorrow, okay? And the dog's fine. Uh, don't worry. Uh, but, uh, you know, he gets treats. That's all he cares about. So, okay. Well, God bless you guys. We'll see you at noon today and at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right. Bye-bye.